All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another collaboration beer, this time between Hot Butcher for the World, and they're out of Chicago, Illinois, and the Cohesion Brewing Company, and they're out of Denver, Colorado, and this is their Cold Horns. So this is a Kazbek, Simcoe, and Centennial Hopped Cold Double IPA that comes at 7.5% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just under five weeks old. I'm going to give a huge thanks. Shout out once again to Hop Butcher for this beer. So big thanks to them. In the description box, I'll post a link to the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies that they sent my way. And they sent me 12 beers in total, six of which were unique. And this is one of the six. And this might be the coolest one because... It's a cold double IPA and it's featuring Kazbek hops, which when I did the uh, unboxing, I was like, I don't know if I've ever had those before. And then I went back to uh, my reviews and sure enough, I reviewed one beer that had Kazbek hops and it was a double dry hopped um, Czech style Pilsner from Thin Man, a local brewery here in Buffalo, New York. And uh, I didn't look at the review, but I've had it before. And a lot of people in the comments of the unboxing said that like Kazbek is like known as super saws. So it's like a super, I guess, intense version of sauce hops. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting, without question, an interesting um, hop build, Kazbek, Simcoe, and Centennial, but I'm here for it. Did not look at the tasting notes. We'll try to remember to read them at the end. And uh, yeah, let's crack this one open. Now, now um, Cohesion, uh, I really don't know anything about them. However, a friend of mine and uh, owner of one of my favorite local bottle shops here in the West New York area, Brewed and Bottled in... Uh, Lewis in New York, uh, Chris, he actually went to Colorado towards the end or the beginning of April, I should say, or maybe it was late, late March or early April. And he actually went to Cohesion and had some of their beers and whatnot. And I remember seeing the check-ins and he really enjoyed the experience. Um, and yeah, I, I, that's pretty much all I know about them outside of this beer, but he seemed to dig it. And I think he may have had this beer on tap anyway. That, my friends, looks like an old school West Coast IPA or old school American IPA. It looks like I just poured dogfish head uh, 60 or 90 minute into my glass. So it has that beautiful kind of like deep, rich orange uh, color. Uh, has, you know, a decent clarity, but there might be some chill haze or just maybe a little bit of gentle haze in general. You can see like the shadow on my hand, maybe can't make it out exactly. Had about a finger. Now it's about three quarters of a finger of this uh, eggshell white, somewhat creamy looking head. Hold it up to the light. That looks beautiful. There are a, there's a little bit of sediment in the glass. And of course, we are in the hashtag proper glass where we got the hot butcher glass here. And uh, as always, this beer, does beer look better in hashtag proper glass where it does? It does. Does it taste better? I hope so. <laughs> anyway, that's a good nose. Ooh. It has a big like fruitiness to it. I wasn't expecting that. Now, cold, cold IPAs and double IPAs, you know, some folks think they taste like, you know, IPLs, and they do have some similarities. Uh, but to me, they just kind of smell like a cleaner, like old school, like West Coast, like IPA, or in this case, a double IPA, or like an old school American IPA, just a little bit cleaner and crushable and crisp. Yeah, so there's a lot of, um, I'm getting like, I don't know how, because it's Kazbek, Simcoe, and Centennial, but I would have said there's mosaic in here, because I'm getting like that blueberry, almost mixed berry kind of vibe sweeter getting a lot of citrus there's there's a sweeter orange um a little bit of pithy orange there's some ruby red grapefruit sweeter grapefruit it's almost like you took uh grapefruit and sprinkled some uh, sugar on top of it. it has like a candied vibe to it both that the orange a little bit of tangerine i am getting like what i think is a little bit of like bready caramel kind of malt character and then there's this like generic like er floral earthiness as well if you would have told me this is like a flagship beer from like 2012, I'd be like, oh yeah, for sure. Because it smells very old school, but it smells pretty fucking good. Let's get into it. Cheers to everybody. Thanks again to Hot Butcher. Super easy to drink. Mm. It's nice. It's nice. It's not blowing me away off of that first sip, but it's really fucking nice. Let's go back in and uh, we'll go body mouthfeel. By the 7.5%, I thought it was going to be maybe a little bit lighter, but it's not. It's like higher side of medium. A little bit bigger than anticipated, which is cool. The mouthfeel, really crisp. Like this is moderate to touch over moderate carbonation. Very crisp on the palate. Very clean beer as well. Super clean. Um, it's smooth on the palate. Just again, it has an old school mouthfeel to it. The taste 
Right front, I get that bready, caramel, maybe even a touch of honey dives underneath the palate. Then the citrus hits. It's sweet and candied orange, grapefruit. You could say tangerine, maybe tangelo. It's like you took all those fruits and you just sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of them. After that, though, I am getting that mixed berry. Very minute compared to the nose. It's more of like a blueberry, like with a, a little bit of strawberry, but I don't know where that's coming from. Maybe the Kazbek is doing something, but I doubt it because, again, like a super sauce, you don't really say berry. Maybe it's that in combination with the Simcoe or just the hot bill as a whole. But again, it's not too big. There's a little bit of like a peach and apricot nectarine kind of stone fruit vibe. And then it finishes with this floral earthiness, a touch of like a spiciness too, maybe from Centennial. Some had a full on dry, mild to moderately bitter, pretty well balanced as a whole. This drinks again, like if you told me this was 60 minute from Dogfish Head or like uh, 90 minute, I would say 75 minute, but that's the one that's uh, brewed with maple syrup, but kind of like in that old school, this is like old school East Coast IPA. It really is to me. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because I like those beers. Uh, 60 minutes good, 90 minutes really good too. I'd say it takes more like 60 minute though, because 90 minute has a little bit more malt complexity and is malt, a little bit more malt driven because of the ABV. But this isn't that, that malty. I mean, it, you know, it has a good malt character, but it's more balanced in the 60 minute range. Um, I don't know why I'm comparing it to that. It's just kind of off the off the rip there. It just kind of gives me that type of memory where it's like, oh, yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of Dogfish at 60 minute, which is a good thing. Um, ABV, you can't really tell. Maybe a little warming in the chest, nothing on the palate. Yeah, for 7.5%, this is this is nicely done. I think the body being a little bit bigger than anticipated is a, a welcomed addition. Uh, the mouthfeel being that crisp, really clean, um, super easy drinking, crushable kind of uh, mouthfeel is, is something that if you're buying this, you probably want. You know what I mean? Because you want to be able to drink a couple cans of this. It's nice. Uh, I can't go crazy high on it because it's just not like you know, blowing me away or anything, but cold horns... Uh, co I was going to say combination, a collaboration between Hot Butcher and Cohesion. I like this. I'm going to give this a uh, high 4 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.05. And then look in the tasting notes right at the back. But yeah, I really like the color scheme of this. Dan Jets are killing it as always. But uh, the color scheme is just really cool. The color scheme is cool. The artwork's awesome. Like it's just, it's, it's a vibe. It's a definite vibe. All right, so tasting notes. Sweet orange. Yes, as I said, candied sweet orange. You could have just said sweet citrus, and I think that'd be more in the real house of what I got. Ripe berry. Sure, but I said mixed berry, and I think this is more of like in the nose than in the in the taste. I said it was like, you know, a little bit of like, you know, blueberry and, and strawberry, but like it wasn't as big as the nose. So, but I'm all right with it. And then juicy lemon. No, I did not get juicy lemon. If that would have said maybe like juicy peach or like stone fruit or something like that, sure. Didn't really gain. Now I'm curious to go back in here because I, you know, juicy lemon, huh? No, no, no juicy lemon for me. Uh, price point availability. I don't know uh, with a cold double IPA from them. Their double IPAs are typically like what, 15, 16 bucks in the Chicago uh, land area. I would expect this to be the same thing. However, when it comes to the availability, uh, this I think this might be one of those um, tap room only releases. Although anybody out there, if you know for sure, correct me if I'm wrong, might be a tap room exclusive. So this probably didn't make distro. And honestly, if it did make distro, I don't foresee like Hot Butcher getting a cold double IPA out like to wherever they distro. Like we we just actually, as I'm reviewing this um, earlier today, there was a or earlier this week I should say there was a drop of Hot Butcher stuff a couple different places here, and like only interested in bangers showed up, and I might have to grab that because. I think that has Sabro in it, and I love Sabro, so I might drink that. You might see more Hot Butcher reviews, but um, I don't think you'll see, like, a lot of, like, like the... I don't know if you'll see this before, the Regeneration Station, which was their Wakatu Hot Gold. Now, you're not going to see a lot of those from Hot Butcher because a lot of people are going to look at those on the on the shelf and be like, a Gold Nail from Hot Butcher? Why would I drink that, right, type of type of thing? But that Gold Nail might be the winner of the box for me so far outside of Galaxy Bowl. Like, it's that fucking good. But, you know, the hype, the hype styles are the hype styles, and I get it, but... If you can get your hands on this one, you like cold double IPAs or old school like American IPA slash double IPAs, I think you, I think you owe it to yourself to at least 
give this one a go if it's you know not hard to get. Anyway, if you've had this one before, post in the comment section, let me know what you thought about it. If not, what's your favorite cold IPA slash double IPA you've had to date? It's a style that I don't feel like it's taken off as much as like a lot of new IPA styles that they'll hit the market. Like let's go back to brood IPA. The first time brood IPA showed up and then everyone was doing them and then they kind of fizzle out. I don't, I'm not saying cold IP is going that, that, that route or that route, depending on how you like to say it. But I think for me, I saw a lot of cold IPs and double IPs maybe like six months to a year ago. And now I don't see them as often on the shelves. Could be wrong. I think it's a cool style. It's different enough. It kind of gives me old school vibes and, and they're very clean and crushable and easy to drink and stuff. I just don't know how necessary they are, I guess, is the way I look at it. But regardless, this is a nice beer, 4.05 out of 5. I enjoy it. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Thanks to Hot Butcher for this one. I have one last beer left from them that I need to review. I don't know what order you're going to see all the re reviews from Hot Butcher in, but we'll roll them out probably once a week. The next one. Cheers. <laughs>